Hello, my friends. Good morning. How are you? Welcome to another edition of Behind the Mic with me, Mike Avery, here in the Outdoor Magazine radio studio. And I am here to record, well, you know what I'm here to do, to record this week's Outdoor Magazine radio show. I'm glad you're along with us this morning on what in my neck of the woods and I think across much of at least the great state of Michigan is indeed a beautiful morning. It feels like springtime. It's finally here, doesn't it? I think it's time to get I think it's time to get the angler quest out. Cliff, good morning. Craig, how are you, buddy? Always appreciate you guys being along with us on uh both the behind the mic live streams and Wednesday night live as well. Uh let me jump over here to something else just to check something here. See what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Bruce, good morning. How are you? Thanks for joining me on this edition of Behind the Mic. Tim Benz. Denise said, make sure you thank Tim and Jen for that soap. It's wonderful. Do you sell that soap, Tim? And if so, where would somebody get it? Craig says, got a seat for me Friday. Uh, I can't do it, Craig. Love to go. Can't do it. Uh, the fish they're getting down there right now. Doug Ward is on fish. Looks like a good time. I appreciate the invitation. Uh, I just got a bunch of things I'm working on. And I, uh, I've i had some other things get in the way of my schedule. So I can't, can't do it. I am working on getting the angler quest out, though, and also getting ready for uh, turkey season. Jason, good morning. How are you? Joe, always a pleasure. Uncle Johnny, how are you, buddy? Joel Roberts, appreciate you folks being along with me as I uh, get ready to record this week's Outdoor Magazine radio show. I'll tell you who's coming up on the show shortly. But first, a couple of things to talk about. It does seem like now finally spring is here, doesn't it? I feel like we've turned the corner and um, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. Corey is headed down to the Detroit River to pre fish for the uh, Michigan Walleye Tour. Marty, good morning. How are you? Uh, Corey's, uh, Corey is fishing the MWT, the uh, Michigan walleye tour. Good luck on that tour, Corey. If nothing else, you'll have fun, right? I mean, I hope you do well. I hope you make some money, but if nothing else, you're going to have fun. No reason doing it if it wasn't fun. Uh, turkey season does start next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday, the 20th. I left the house a little early this morning and I went over to my buddy Doug's farm to see if I could hear any birds gobbling. Um, I haven't seen a lot of birds wandering around there. I have seen some tracks in the mud, but I wanted to go over there and see if I could hear birds gobbling on the roost. I had a nice surprise. There were at least two different birds gobbling, maybe three. They're not roosted this year where they have been in the past, but I think I am cautiously optimistic that I can pull one of those birds off the roost into the area that I have the permission, my permission to uh, hunt. Hey, Jim, good morning, buddy. How are you? Tim says, yes, you can buy them at the craft shows, Beaverton Farmer's Market, or by sending a message on Facebook. This is, um, what was it? Goat milk soap. It's really good stuff. Uh, send Tim a message on Facebook if you'd like to get some of that soap. It's really good. Justin, good morning. Dave, good morning. Uh, Corey says, I got birds. My turkeys call them in. Your captive turkeys call them in. Well, Corey, maybe I'll, if I don't have any luck on my first two spots, maybe three spots, maybe I'll give you a call. I have much confidence in my number one spot, but the farmer took down a row of trees that changes my setup a little bit. And I don't know how it's going to affect it. Maybe it'll actually work out better for me because the birds will have more visibility for my decoy, decoys, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, I'm looking forward to that. Also looking forward to, good morning, David. Also looking forward to now that the weather has changed, I think I'm going to get in touch with the folks over at Linwood Beach and say, why don't you go ahead and pull that angler quest out of storage and let's put her in the water. The marina where I keep the boat is um, open now. So there's really nothing stopping me uh, from getting that done. Uh, zero wild turkeys, but our tame girls keep calling. Oh, I got you. Tim's got zero wild turkeys, but our tame girls keep calling. 
Morning, Jerry. Thank you for that. I'm not turkey hunting until the 20th. That's when the season starts here in Michigan, but I am scouting for him. Ross, I can't wait to see you. Um, and I hope you're good and healthy now. And I can't wait to see the new skinny Ross Elliott. Jerry, I'm doing well. Always a pleasure to have you along with us, my friend. And I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, the coyote decoy in the backyard seems to be working fairly well to keep the goose, the geese out of the yard. I do move it every couple of days. 88 pounds. Boom. 88 pounds. Ross, congratulations. I can't wait to see you. Man, 88 pounds. I am so happy for you, Ross. Brent, good morning, buddy. How are you? Wow, 88. When you hit the 100-pound mark, it it is, when I hit the 100-pound mark, it was like, it was just so cool. Well, good for you. Good for you. Jerry caught his first walleye this week. Congrats. Walleye are a fun fish. They can be a, they're an interesting fish. I love walleye fishing because they can be sometimes so easy to catch and sometimes so frustrating. And they taste so good. Although I don't eat fish. Uh, my wife, Denise, says, will you quit giving away those fish and throwing those fish back and bring some home to eat? So I do need to do that. Anyway, the, uh, uh, the coyote decoy is um okay co-worker's daughter was in she asked who is that guy my co-worker started last and she said that's ross doesn't that feel good ross doesn't that feel good my goal is not to have to put the goose fence up the goose fence is very very effective it's a three foot tall green snow fence that the geese can fly over but they won't but it's a pain John says, did you see about the wolf harvested in lower Michigan? Yes, I did. And yes, I have. I've been talking ex extensively about it. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more this morning. Good morning, Matt from Houghton Lake. How are you? Okay, this leads me into it. Good morning, Ed. I, uh, I talked about this last week on the show. In fact, I had Brian Roll from the DNR also talking about it. A wolf was harvested by a hunter in southern Michigan in Calhoun County back in January. It was taken by a legal coyote hunter. Now, I say legal because the coyote hunter was hunting legally. It is unclear. Good morning, Mike. How are things down on Lake Erie? Man, James showed me the fish you're into. Holy cow. Holy cow. Hunter Joe says we got some rain coming. Yeah, tomorrow. How is Sherry? How are things in Poseyville? Okay, this wolf. Uh, 36 jeans. I, Jeremy, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, April 10th, Jeremy. Also known as hump day. That's all you're getting today. Hump day. I um, have said right from the start that I am very suspect about a wolf getting all the way from the Upper Peninsula down to Calhoun County. People, and I'm getting a lot of heat from it. I mean, I, I, I posted videos on Facebook. I posted a video on YouTube. I posted a video on Instagram. I posted a video on TikTok. And um, about 80% of the people who watch the video think I'm an absolute idiot. One guy said, Avery, you need to spend more time in the outdoors and less behind that microphone. I stand by that, that I am not convinced that that wolf that showed up in Calhoun County made his way down from the UP. Um, I acknowledge and I readily admit that wolves wander. Absolutely. Is is it biologically realistic 
feasible that a wolf could do that? Yes. Wolves wander. I just, I don't know. I can't, I can't buy into it. I just, um, I think there's another, I think there's another alternative. I think there's another, I want to know the story. I want to know the story and we never will probably. I've been talking to some people behind the scenes to try to learn more about this. Good morning, Gene. Appreciate that, Brent. Matt checking in from Flint. Steve, good morning. How are you? Um, I really want to know the, the answer to this. Really want to know the story here. And I don't think we ever will. Uh, it's being investigated, but, you know, this is something that happened back in January. Some evidence has been destroyed. Uh, they did do a DNA on it, and they say it is indeed a, 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 a biologically, it is a wolf. I just, I, I, I have so many things I want to say about this and so little time to do it. But I'm not one of those people who wants to see wolves in the lower peninsula. There are a certain percentage of people who really want wolves in the lower peninsula. I'm not one of them. I don't want those damn things down here. Um, so where did it come from? Did it wander down from the UP? Did it wander down from the northern lower? Some people say maybe it's here from Wisconsin. I don't think it crossed Lake Michigan. I don't think it made its way through Chicago to make it from Wisconsin to Michigan. It is a mystery. And like the Ron Pola buck, we will probably never know the real answer. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? PETA in Oregon trying to make it illegal to hunt fish and trap. No, I didn't see that, Bernie. Crazy, though, isn't it? It took the bus, Dave says. Okay, so, so John says they can sequence the DNA and determine if it's from the UP pack. I hope they do that. So let me pull up some notes that I made here. So is it from the UP? Is it from the Northern Lower? Is it a private animal, meaning somebody got a hold of a wolf and raised it illegally, and that happens more than you would realize, and it either got loose or they said, this thing is getting too big and they let it go. Um, another scenario is, did somebody... Some youper who's sick of wolves and wants, you know, we always talk about, you know, if you guys had wolves in the lower, um, you would feel differently about them. Maybe some youper said, I'm going to teach those guys a lesson, threw it in the back of his truck and brought it down. Another theory I'm hearing on the, uh, on the, uh, internet, the web is that the DNR brought it down. Uh, I, I just don't see evidence that we have a bunch of wolves in the lower peninsula. I hear about it all the time. People send me trail cam pictures and say, look at the wolf on my trail cam picture. And it's not, it's a coyote. What I'm asking for is if you have proof of a wolf in the lower peninsula, send me the picture, send me the trail camera picture. If you don't want me to share it, I won't share it, but I need to be convinced that there is a population of wolves in the lower peninsula. And I'm not convinced right now. Send me the picture. If all these wolves are out there, coyote hunters would have seen them before now, and they'd be all over trail camp. The trappers would have had them. And we're not seeing that. Art Lewis, come in here, buddy. Please. Yeah. This is Art Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. You know Art Lewis. He is a broadcasting icon. He's a member of the Michigan Broadcasting Hall of Fame. And will you be joining us for the golf outing in West Branch in July? Are you part of the SGW team? Do you know yet? I uh, hope so. Oh, well, I hope so too. <laughs> but I haven't been officially invited, but I hope so. Well, I, I think we can talk to a guy to get you invited. Can you really? <laughs> I, well, bet we, I bet we know a guy. <clears throat> good. I, see we're, I think we're going to talk about it on one of the focus shows. I saw that. I saw yeah. that, yeah. They wanted me to schedule something in May, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing for tomorrow's radio show. I'm not worried about May yet. You know how that goes. You're worried about May. You're getting ready to turkey hunt. I am getting ready to turkey hunt. <laughs> All right, Art. Uh, always a pleasure, Bye. buddy. Appreciate you checking in with us. Uh, Julie, good morning. 
Shannon, good morning. Jen, good morning. I was asking about the soap. If people are interested, they can reach out to Stolen Willow Farm on Facebook or Instagram, and I can help them out. Stolen Willow Farm on Facebook or Instagram if you want some of that really, really nice um, goat milk soap. Josh Mapes, let me ask you this. Do you think the wolf and what do you think about the wolf in, in Calhoun County? How did it get there, Josh Mapes? You're a coyote hunter. Hunter Joe says it may make it easier to get them off the endangered species list, at least if they are more widespread. John says, you don't think Michiganders don't practice shoot, shovel, and shut up? Of course they do. Morels, I haven't seen any yet. Tony says, I saw you on Miller Road yesterday. The truck looks awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, we were. I had to take my uh, father-in-law downstate for um, a doctor's visit. Craig says, can I still sponsor a hole to golf outing? Of course you can. We're just putting together, I say we, Steve Windham of MUCC, is putting together that sponsor package right now, uh, Craig. I will add you to the list of people who are interested in sponsorship. But yeah, that'd be great. Of course you can. Well, there's Steve right there. July 29th, going to be the best golf outing of the summer. Steve, um, I know you're working on that sponsor package. When will that be released? And do you know, Kevin Hannes, Steve Windham, if folks can call the West Branch Country Club now and sign up for the outing? Josh says, I think it crossed borders from either the UP or Canada personally. It's really not far-fetched with collar studies saying even coyotes will travel a couple hundred miles, a couple hundred miles. And that certainly is a possibility. Absolutely, it's a possibility. I still think when water freezes over, it becomes a highway, and there's a lot of video of snowmobilers on the ice watching wolves run the ice as well. Good morning, Johnny. How are you? Johnny, what do you think? Johnny, was that wolf in Calhoun County one of yours, or did it come from somewhere else? Okay, Steve, we will be hosting registration at MUCC.org. Registration and sponsor packets will be ready by the end of next week. Okay, so we're going to register for the outing and do the sponsor at MUCC.org. That's MUCC.org. So, Craig Plowman, you are interested in becoming a whole sponsor, uh, MUCC.org. Johnny, say, I'd say Wisconsin. Johnny, what to do? Swim over Lake Michigan? George says, I'd like to see the entire DNA results. I, good morning. Hey, Angie, how are you? Um, I just really want to know the truth to this, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. But it's an interesting story, isn't it? Okay, let me talk about who's on the Outdoor Magazine radio. <laughs> you already know my opinion. You think the DNR brought it down in a truck, don't you, Johnny? Uh, Coyote Hunter here. I've seen wolf tracks in the northern lower. Talk to locals that have seen them. I just want to know. I I keep hearing about people who say they have coyote or wolves on their trail cameras, and then they send me the trail camera pictures, and it's a coyote. I don't think we'll ever know. I really don't. I don't think we'll ever know. Tim says, I'm not a conspiracy guy. Yes, you are, Tim. But coyotes, a coyote hunt ban and a lower peninsula wolves at the same time. Uh, Steve said, do trappers accidentally catch many wolves in the UP? I think they do. But we don't see them down here. The dog trappers aren't getting them down here. The dog hunters aren't running them. Josh says, all I know is identify what you're shooting. But Josh, you hunt downstate. If a great big coyote came out to one of your calls in Calhoun County, would you have hesitated? And I'm, I'm being absolutely, I'm serious here because you're a good hunter, a legitimate hunter. Do you, would you have shot it? Would you even remotely said, oh, I think that's a wolf? Craig says, how come it's always wolf picks, but nobody ever reports hearing them howl? Steve says, could it have anything to do with the wolf that got out of Binder Park Zoo a few years ago? Could it have bred with a yote before it was killed? The DNA says it's 100% uh, wolf. I don't know. I'm fascinated. Let me tell you who's coming up on the show. Rich Grisan of Killer Food Slot Plots, number one 
Will Fitzpatrick from Michigan Moon, then Tom Campbell of Woods and Water News. Hour number three, Dave Mull, the Yak Master, Katie Grijak from the DNR, and Glenn Duncan answers the Ask Avery question about if you're trying to save money on a turkey load, could you actually put steel shot through your turkey choke? And in hour number three, we're talking turkey with Tom Lounsbury, plus wild game chef extraordinaire Dixie Dave Miner. Tough question. We really can't pass judgment, really. They aren't supposed to be here, so why would all of a sudden be? Exactly. It is a tough question. Uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, in a few seconds here, I'm going to have to switch my focus from this microphone, my social media microphone, to this one, my official broadcast microphone. Uh, can you say what evidence was tampered with? No, I don't know of any evidence that was tampered with at all. It's always going to be the mystery wolf. You're right. Good morning, Patrick. Blast off. Okay. So the music has started. You can hear it right there. That's the music. Which means I got to go to work. Josh says, personally, I think the DNR should have kept it quiet. It's created a poop storm, hasn't it? Tim says, if he sees a big yacht, he'll shoot it. Mystery Wolf, Walker, Tom Berry, four. I don't know. Mystery Wolf equals Walker, Tom Berry. I don't know what that means. All right, my friends. Have a good day. Talk to you tonight, Wednesday Night Live. Well, thank you, Ken Hunter, for that introduction. And welcome to another edition of the Outdoor Magazine radio show right here on the Outdoor Magazine radio network on more than 30 radio stations across the great state of Michigan. And so glad to have you along with us. As I am here in the studio today, it is an absolutely beautiful day. I feel like we've turned the corner. I feel like springtime is indeed here. And I, for one, could not be happier. Springtime brings so many different outdoor recreational opportunities here. Of course, springtime uh, turkey hunting season, all the great fishing seasons, morel mushroom season, just everything getting outdoors. And it just, um, it feels good. It feels good. I personally am very excited about uh, turkey season. In fact, on the way into the studio here this morning, I made a little detour, a little side trip. I left early. So I could go out and do some um, scouting, trying to roost some birds. My number one property that I like to hunt because it's close to the house and it has birds on it is owned by my my buddy, Doug. So the last couple of weeks, I've, I've done a lot of drive-bys to see if I can see birds out in the field. Haven't seen any. And I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. I have seen a few tracks in the mud back by uh, the woods. This is an interesting property because Doug's farm does not extend into the woods, but the woods are where the birds roost. So what I have to do is try to call the birds off the roost over to my buddy Doug's property. And, you know, I've, I've had some success doing that and had close encounters and shot birds there several times. But this year, as I've told you before, the farmer took down a row of trees, and I don't know how that's going to change things, because I used to like to set up my Wraith 270C through ground blind back in that corner, because I had a lot of cover. This year, I don't know. Anyway, so I go out there early this morning, and uh, just wait to hear, right? Wait to hear a bird gobble on the roost. Normally, in past years, the birds would roost Oh, to the southeast of the property. So that's where I set up. Again, just waiting to hear something. I want to hear a bird gobble. I want to hear a bird gobble to know that they're at least in the area because I haven't been seeing them. About 625, just starting to crack daylight, and I hear the first gobble. Oh, what a relief that was. Of course, he's on the other corner of the property. He's on the northeast side of the property but he's there and then i hear another bird gobble okay we've got two birds there and then maybe a third gobble 
All right. So, and they don't sound like Jake's. They sound like long beards. Okay. Whew. I can breathe uh, uh, a sigh of relief. I've got birds in the area. So next Saturday, well, probably next Friday, I will take my Wraith 270, see through ground blind out there and set it up in that corner of the property and be all ready to go. Listen, speaking of that ground blind, if you want to get one of those Wraith 270 see-through blinds, the blinds that I use for turkey hunting, for bear hunting, and for deer hunting, I've teamed up with the folks at Primal Outdoors and Jay Sporting Goods to offer a real good discount. But it's only good for the month of April. So don't, don't wait. If you go into Jay's in the Claire store or the Gaylord store, walk back there, pick up one of those wraiths, go to the counter and say, I want the Avery discount. And they're probably going to know what the Avery discount is. If they don't, it's Avery. 424. Avery 424. And you'll get one of those blinds for $149.99. If you can't make it to the stores, if you go to jsportinggoods.com, that's jsportinggoods.com, at checkout, use the promo code Avery424. You can get one for that same price, less than $150. How can you pass that up? You can't. <laughs> I went up there and used my own promo code and bought one of my own. Anyway. I'm very excited about uh, turkey season. I will be out there this year with a crossbow. I don't know what head I'm going to use yet. It's going to be a wreck head. I don't know if it's going to be their traditional expandable, if it's going to be their new bigger expandable, or if I'm just going to go with a fixed blade. Turkeys are surprisingly hard critters to take with archery tackle. So, you know, maybe the biggest cut I can get on a broadhead is what I should go with. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about turkey season and that gobble this morning, that very first gobble reminded me of why I love it so much. If you haven't tried turkey hunting, I really think you should. If for no other reason than to give you an opportunity to be, to be in the woods in the springtime and listen to the woods come alive, the, the, you know, the songbirds, the Tweety birds, uh, watch the sun come up and hear that first gobble. It is absolutely addicting. You know what else I'm addicted to? Yes, you do. Walleye fishing. And with the change in the weather, the turn in the weather, I suspect by I don't want to I don't want to lock myself into a, a corner here that I can't I can't live up to the timetable. But sometime here in the very near future, uh, we're gonna get the Angler Quest out, uh, out of storage at Linwood Beach Marina, get it on the water. So I'll be dividing my time between turkey hunting and walleye fishing. That's a pretty good pretty good option to have isn't it um the coyote decoy in the backyard is still surprisingly working fairly well i move it around every couple of days uh, the coyote decoy is out there to try to keep geese out of the yard i don't want to put up the goose fence this year just because it's a lot of work if i can put a decoy in the backyard and keep the geese out of the yard it's just a lot easier i suspect that eventually the effectiveness of that coyote standing there still in the backyard is probably going to wear off but for now it seems to be working pretty good speaking of coyotes makes me think about wolves there is still the question of that wolf that was shot by that coyote hunter in calhoun county more questions than answers this was shot by a hunter back in january it was a coyote hunter uh, the situation is still under investigation. What do I mean by that? Well, it's illegal to shoot a wolf. And this actually, the DNA proved that it was a wolf. But will the guy be charged? I mean, who could have reasonably expected a Southern Michigan coyote hunter to hold off shooting a big coyote because it was a wolf? Is that a reasonable expectation? I don't know. And the decision hasn't been made yet there as we are sitting in the studio right now as to what to do. Now, they may come out tomorrow and say, no, the guy is scot-free or they're going to charge him. But as we're sitting in the studio right now, we don't know. You know what else? We don't know where it came from. I said right from the start that I was very suspect of this. Something just doesn't seem right to me. Is it possible? that a wolf would wander down from the UP? Absolutely. Is it possible that a wolf would wander down from the lower, uh, northern lower peninsula? Possibly. 
I've heard people say, well, it came over from Wisconsin. I don't think it came over from Wisconsin. What did it do? Swim Lake Michigan? Did it cross through Chicago? Or is there another option? Did it get there because somebody had a pet wolf? This is not unheard of. It's happened before. And it got away. You're not supposed to. It's illegal. It seems kind of dumb to raise a wolf. But it escaped. Or it just got to be too much. And they just went out in the woods and they let it go. I've also heard theories that the DNR trapped one from the UP and brought it down to release it. Or some Uper who was trying to make a point trapped a wolf up there and brought it down. I'd love to find out definitively where this came from. Unfortunately, I, I don't think we ever will. But the idea, what? I don't think there are as many wolves in the lower peninsula as people keep telling me that there are. I get uh, people all the time say, I've got wolves on my trail camera. Cool. Send me the picture. And I see the picture and it's not a wolf. It's a big coyote. But here's my request. I would love to, if you have, Proof of wolves in the lower peninsula, either, well, it's going to have to be a trail camera picture, right? Send it to me. If you don't want me to share it, I won't. But if there are that many wolves in the lower peninsula, as people are claiming, let's, let's try to get a handle on it. Send me a picture of your trail camera picture with a wolf on it to Mike at MikeAveryOutdoors.com. That's Mike at MikeAveryOutdoors.com. Send it to me. I will keep it confidential, but please tell me what county it's in, when the picture is from, and let's 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 see. I just don't think they're out there in the numbers that a lot of people claim. I think it's going to be one of those mysteries. It's going to be it's going to be right up there with the Ron Pola buck. Coming up uh, this week's Outdoor Magazine show after the break, Rich Grisan of Killer Food Plots, then Will Fitzpatrick from Michigan Moon, and Tom Campbell of Woods and Water News. In our second hour, the Yak Master, Dave Mull, Katie Grijak talking about invasive species, then Glenn Duncan answers this week's Ask Avery question. And in hour number three, we're talking turkey with Tom Lounsbury. All that plus wild game chef Dixie Dave Miner and more coming up this week right here on Outdoor Magazine. Charles says, Mike, it came across the Straits of Mackinac. Did it swim? Uh, I know they come across the ice. And I know that is certainly biologically possible. I just have a hard time buying into it. Jerry's Fishing Night, good for you. Thank you, Charles. ML, dodging tornadoes in South Louisiana. Keep your head down, buddy. All right, my friends. Um, I will be back here tonight at 7 o'clock for another edition of Wednesday Night Live. I, can ho I hope you can join me then. We'll talk more about this and some other. John says, you just have to believe. I do believe in a lot of things, but this isn't one of them. <laughs> uh yeah, I, I, I hear you. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Anyway, I got to go. I could talk about this all morning, but I can't. So I will be back tonight, 7 o'clock, for another edition of Wednesday Night Live, and I hope you can join me then. In the meantime, have a great day.